Hello, it's Gem Games, and in this video I'm gonna show you how to use blueprint interfaces. So here we have these two separate actors, this light and this switch, and I can turn the light on and off with this switch, like this. Also we have this door and this switch, and we can open the door by clicking on that. So, as you can see, these are all separate actors, they are not hard-coded together by any means. So. Let's get started. So I have created this empty first person template and I have deleted the weapon because we don't need that. And now here on the blueprints folder, I want to create a new folder called interface or maybe like interfaces. And I will change this color to some shade of blue like this. Now let's open it and let's create a new blueprint class and sorry we don't want to do it that way. We want to go to the blueprint on here and we want to create a blueprint interface. Let's call this interactable. Okay now let's open that and here we have this new function. Let's rename this to can interact. Like that. Let's create another one. Let's call this interact. So like that. And here on can interact, let's open it. And we want to click on this and we want to add an output. It should be type Boolean. Let's call it result or something like that. Okay. Let's compile, let's save, and let's close this. Now we want to create a simple uh, interaction trace to our character. So pp first person character, let's open it. Let's create a new function. And let's call the function like interaction, interaction, Trace or something like that. Here, what we want to do, we want to get our first person camera. We want to get world location. <clears throat> then we want to get get forward vector. Now we want to right click and create a line trace by channel. Let's connect it to here and let's connect this get world location to the start. So we will start the trace from our camera. And now we want to multiply this forward vector. So let's multiply. And here we want to right click on this pin and convert it to float single precision like this. And now here we want to promote this to a variable and let's call it uh, interaction range. And I actually have some uh, variables from the rifle that the template has, so I will delete this because we don't need that. But yeah, interaction range. Let's compile and let's change it to like 200 or something like that. Maybe like 250 even. Okay, now we want to get from this and we want to plus. We want to add these together and connect this to the end. Okay, now let's align this so it looks better. And here, what we want to do next is from the out hit, we want to get it and we want to break hit results like this. Let's open it. And here we can just get the hit actor. We can promote that to a variable. And let's call this hit actor reference. Okay. After that, what we want to do, we want to get from this uh, hit actor ref, and we want to check if does implement interface. Now we want to select, select our interact, 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 interactable interface. So that the one that we just created. Okay. And then we want to promote this return value to a variable like this. 
Okay. And let's call this. Actually, let's not do this. Do it this way. Let's do it other way. So let's move this a little bit more down. Let's delete this variable. And let's add a branch. So if the hit actor ref does implement the interface, then what we want to do, we want to get the ref and we want to call the interact can interact this uh, function basically. Uh, this is uh, from the uh, blueprint interface. Now we want to promote this result to a variable. This we will call can interact. Okay. Also here on does implement interface, we want to get the can interact and we want to set it to false like this. <clears throat> okay. So we have the basic trace already done. So now let's go to the event graph and let's create a event tick. So we will have to check trace every frame. So let's get the interaction trace to here, like that. Now we want to create a key that we can uh, call to interaction. So let's create a simple right click and search for a key. And I will select whatever and map this to E like that. Now, what we want to do, we want to add a branch and we want to check if we can interact like this. And if we can, we want to get the hit actor ref and we want to call the interact, this one, interact message. Okay, so if the trace hits actor that does implement the interactable interface, then we will check if we can interact and we will promote it to a variable. And if it doesn't, it will set the can interact to false. And here, when we press E, it will check if we can interact. So we are, if we are basically uh, facing the interactable object, if we can, we will call the interact on the, on that actor like that. Now let's create the actor. So let's compile, let's save all. Uh, let's go to the third person map. Let's create a new folder. Let's call it interact or something like that. Now let's open it and let's create a new blueprint class actor. Let's call this switch or something like that. Let's open it and let's create a simple switch or something like that. So let's make this a lot smaller. Let's make Point one, point one. You can obviously use whatever uh, on this switch that you want, but yeah. And that will be our switch for now. Now, what what I want to do is we have to go to the class settings here on this switch. And here, interfaces, no interfaces, inherited interfaces we want to add and we want to search for the interactable like this and you will have to edit uh, add this interface to every actor that you want to interact with now you can see we have this interface thing here and we have got a few new functions so let's open the can interact here only thing that you want to do is you want to set this to true if this is interactable and not, or if there is something else that has to happen before it is interactable, then we want to add the code here. But yeah, result true, it is interactable, and on interact here. What we want to do now, we want to create a new variable. Let's call it uh, connect that actor ref, ref, sorry. And here we want to change this to actor, actor object reference, and we want to make it instance editable and expose on spawn. So we can edit it or set it on the 
set, what I'm saying, set it on the level like that. And here, what we want to do. Now we have to create the connection interface. So let's compile and save. Let's actually first create the light or something. So let's right click and create a blueprint class type actor. Let's call this light or something like that. Let's open it. Let's add a static mesh. And here we should have this uh, lighting. Okay, yes, in lamp wall, lamp ceiling, this one. And why is it like this? Okay, let's move it a little bit more up, even more, something like that. Now let's add a light source. So let's search for a light, point light, I think, or yeah, point light. And now let's move it to, it can actually be, yeah, somewhere around there. This is just for testing purposes, so it actually doesn't matter. Now, here on the, actually, we will have to, let's compile, let's save, and let's move this next to the other uh, windows. So now, let's go to the first person map, and let's go to the interfaces. Let's create a new blueprint interface. Let's call this connection, or something like that. Okay, and here, what we have to do, we want to create a function called activate, and nothing else. We don't have to do anything else here. So let's compile, let's save, now let's close this. And here on the light, we want to go to the class settings, and we want to add that connection interface. So connection. So now we can connect this. We have this activate interface uh, event here. Let's double click on it. Here you want to call the or create the code. So what I will do, I will just create a simple flip flop. So it will change between two things. Now let's get the point light and let's set visibility. Now let's connect A to here. Also B to here. So it will call this on both of these. And now is A to new visibility. So it will change it on and off, on and off when we call this. Okay. Now compile, save, and we can close this light. Here on first person map and on the interactables, we have this switch. Let's open it. And here, event on interact, uh, event interact. We want to get the connected actor ref. And from here, we want to just call the uh, connection activate. So this will call the activate uh, event on by the connection a blueprint interface. So now when we compile, when we save and close this, and we move this switch to the level, let's move it to here. It doesn't look like a switch, but it will work for now. It's a cube, but it doesn't matter. Now let's get the light here. Okay. And now when we select this switch, we have this connected actor ref here because we made it uh, instance editable. Now when we select from here, we want to select our actor that we want to connect. In this case, the light. So let's select the light like this. Now when we play, and we actually, I want to play on new editor window. And when we go, lacking so much, but when I go close to the button and I press E, you can see the light, I will show you like this. Uh, the light will turn on and off because they are now connected by the blueprint interfaces. And you can create whatever and connect, uh, you can connect anything together with this. So for example, if we create a new uh, actor blueprint class, Let's call this door. Let's open it. Here, let's add a simple 
cube. Let's make it a little bit bigger, taller, and narrower like this. So now we want to go to class settings and we want to add that connection interface like this. For now, this has this activate here. Now let's double click on that activate. Now we have to create the code that we call uh, on activate. And what we want to do, we want to get the cube, which is the door that we just created, get it to here. And we want to add a timeline. And we want to play it from the start. Okay, let's make this timeline one second. Track at flow track start let's make it zero and zero at the end one and one so it will go from zero to one in one second okay so compile save and we can close this timeline and now here we want to get the cube and we want to set relative uh, location because we want to make the door go underground like like this so how can we do that our door is 3.75 tall, so 375 units. And here we want to split this and we want to get from the set and we want to just lerp and get the new track to the alpha. And A is zero because R is zero as default and B is minus 375 or you can put just like minus 400 or whatever, more than the height of this. So, compile, save, and now if we add this door to the level, for example, to here, and we add a new switch here. Okay, and now this switch, we want to select the door blueprint, like that. Now it's connected to this, and it will call the, uh, it will call this event activate uh, event. So now when we play, go near the, uh, where did it go? Switch to, okay, I will have to move it a little bit. Here it's, okay, yeah, sorry about that. Now, when we go to here and we activate this, the door will go down and you can obviously connect whatever you want to that. But yeah, that was basically how Blueprint interfaces work. So yeah, I think that was all for this video. If you liked what you saw, please click the like button and subscribe for more. And yeah, hope you have a great day and see you on the next one.